Hey everyone, uh, welcome back. We're about to release version 2.0 of the Highbyte Intelligence Hub. So I'm going to put together some videos that show you some of this new functionality. I'm actually recording uh, in a closet because the team's growing so big uh, that I need to get away from the larger group to shoot uh, these videos now, which is awesome. But today I want to show you specifically a functionality that we call dynamic inputs. So what this is is the ability to direct a flow such that you can grab an identifier from one input and feed that to make a query in another. And the most common example of that would be, I'm gonna reach down via OPC to grab a batch ID from the machine, and then use that batch ID to go query batch information from the MES system, package that together, and send it to the cloud. So this is pretty slick. Uh, so I've got a blank high byte configuration version 2.0. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create my connections, right? So one of those is, for, uh, for this demo, is gonna be OPC. So I've got a local uh, Kepware running on my machine, 49320. No security. And I've got a few tags. My data model is going to be very simple to demo this functionality, but I've got some line tags in here with a batch ID uh, running, the running state, and then the running minutes. So I'm going to import those. And then I'll do a quick read. That all works. The next thing I'm going to do is create my SQL connections. This is to my, let's say, MES system that has my batch information in it. So 127.0.0.1. I've got SQL Server running locally. I've got a test database with my name and then a super secret password. And uh, I'm going to go in there just briefly to make sure this works. So when I hit open, it'll do a query. You can see I do have uh, some batch data. And if I do a select all from and execute, you can see there's some really simple batch information that I made up uh, in here. Uh, the last, I don't want two more connections. One, I want MQTT. This is going to be for my output. This could be to the cloud, uh, could be AWS or Azure, but uh, for the purpose of this, I'm just going to do it locally to a broker. And I'm going to use that for the output. So we're going to do, uh, I'm just going to call it output batch and save that. The last connection I want is a REST connection because this dynamic input stuff works over REST now too. So I just want a chance to show you that. So in here, I use this webhook site quite a bit to, to test REST data. So I'm going to copy in the base URL and then I'm going to make an input. And in the input, I'm going to I'll call this batch and put the input identifier we got an awesome thunderstorm. I don't know if you can hear it uh, rolling through Portland, Maine. Uh, all right, so I've got my connections. I think that's four, right? Perfect. So let's briefly look at my data model. This is going to be really simple for this demo. right? I have a line state, a current batch ID, order volume, and running minutes. And in terms of data types, I'm just going to use what's coming from the source. So what I'm going to do is create an instance of this. I'm going to call it line one the batch data for line one. So I'm gonna open my OPC connector and you remember these tags that I brought in. So I'm gonna bring the line state, that's the running flag, uh, running minutes. I'm gonna grab uh, the batch ID, which is coming from, from there. And I'm gonna leave order volume empty at the moment. All right, so what I'm gonna do then, lastly, I'm gonna create a flow just to get a test flow going. So I'm gonna say batch to MQTT or I probably should call it line one to MQTT, but I'm gonna use that instance. Uh-oh, which instance do I, did I actually set up? Looks like they're both the same. All right, so I'm gonna go back to flow, get a chance to rename that uh, line one. I'm gonna grab my instance, which is line one, and I'm gonna output that to MQTT. Output. And then I'm just going to turn that on. Now, I haven't wired in that flow that I mentioned where I'm going to use the, the tag data to go grab the batch information from OPC, but that's okay. We'll add that in uh, next. So I'm going to bring up my client, and you can see if I delete, clear my message buffer, you'll see I have these messages coming in, and they have everything but the, the batch, the volume coming in, right? So I, I'm getting one, two, three as the batch ID from the, from the PLC. So now I want to show you the dynamic input. So let's jump into SQL. And we're going to create a SQL request. 
and it's select everything from batch ID. All right, if we do that, I only have two batches. I have batch 122 and 123, 123 in theirs. But I can write a where clause that says where batch ID is equal to 122. I'm going to get the same return, right? Or I could change it to 123, and I get a different return. But this number is dynamically coming from uh, OPC. So what you can do is pull the references tab and you get the batch ID from OPC. Now there's a caveat in the initial release where when I set this, uh, I can't actually do an execute anymore because the UI triggered reads are different from the ones that are triggered by the flow. So we can't fill in that information. We're going to quickly fix that, but know that this, you know, if you replace this with 122, essentially in the flow logic, that's what we'll do. We'll go read it from the PLC and replace it in. All right, so we're going to leave that. I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll set it to 122 right now, execute and save that. And then what we're going to do, oops, we've got to name it. Uh, so we can execute that. Then we're going to go into our model just for the ease of setup. And what we're going to do is grab it from here. So we actually want the volume of the batch that we did the dynamic lookup on, right? And we're going to save that. Now, that reference panel wouldn't work again with a dynamic input. We're going to, we're going to fix that pretty soon so that uh, that input would return. But I'm going to go back now and replace this with the dynamic input, which is the feature that we want to show you. So batch, I've got someone walking upstairs above me. Uh, Let's see, batch ID, there you go. All right, so now when I trigger, now this flow is gonna go out, read the PLC, go query the SQL database with the value in the PLC, the batch ID to return that batch information. So I've been editing this all in real time. If I go back in, you can see that order volume of 440 for batch one, two, three. Now, if I pull up my table, you can see 440 is the batch for one, two, three. But now to show how cool this is, let me go in and I'm going to change the PLC to batch 122. And you're going to see the order volume is now 312, which is the order volume for batch 122. So you see we're using that value from the PLC to go query the database. That's a dynamic, we call that a dynamic input. Uh, so that's pretty cool. We also support it over REST, right? So what I'll show there quick, um, if I go into the REST input, just like I can for SQL, I can start to use this references panel to pull inputs in dynamically. Now again, the read input isn't going to work uh, because we, we don't replace it dynamically yet for the reads through the UI, but we'll fix that. But let me show you, I can do batch ID equal to, oh, I'm not gonna remember. Uh, let me jump back to what I did in SQL. This video is gonna encourage me to go fix that, <laughs> that UI read really quick. But I wanted to show you this feature in advance because I think it's it's pretty powerful in terms of the data flows you can create. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna actually add as a parameter that same input and I'm gonna save that. And then I'm gonna create a flow. I'm just gonna call it uh, line one rest and this is i'm not actually going to this flow isn't going to fully work it's just going to make the request and i'm going to show you that the request has the dynamic input in it so if i grab the input which is the rest input the batch one and the output um to mqtt i'm not actually going to be able to output to mqtt because it's the webhook isn't going to return the proper response but once i turn this on we go look at the webhook, you can see this is the raw request coming in. You can see that batch of 122 is in there. And I can go in again and change this to 123. And that gets replaced, right? The other thing I can do is I can put it in the body. So if I go to the connection, the rest connection, and show this on the fly, I can go to post and I can do something cool like, you know, say your rest endpoint takes JSON and it needs a batch ID parameter, uh, I can paste that in there. And maybe it's a string, you know, not a number. So I'm gonna put it in quotes and save that. And what you'll see is dynamically it changes it to a post and then that post body contains that dynamic variable. So I'm reading that from OPC 
right? And then I'm driving the query via REST with that input. And this is like, you know, this syntax is pretty complex. So if I, uh, or uh, complex is not the right word, <laughs> pretty useful. So like, say it's not an OPC tag, like say this is something like MQTT and I'm getting JSON over a topic X, you know, I can reference that JSON into that JSON to be like, you know, attribute one, uh, at child node, even if it was an array, you know, array zero, volume, like something like that. And that would, you know, at runtime, we'd go grab the, the MQTT input, evaluate that expression on it, grab that volume attribute, and use that to drive the rest input. So you can use these to kind of tie inputs together very dynamically and do some pretty cool things. Uh, again, we'll fix the, the issue of the UI read so that all is seamless inside of HiByte. Uh, you'll see that very shortly in 2.1, but I thought this was a cool feature, uh, one I wanted to show off. But uh, all right, stay tuned for more videos. All right, cheers.